the uh, Sunday where we always do the, uh, the genealogy according to the uh, line from Abraham. And um, it's also the Sunday, as we say, before uh, this uh, celebration of Christmas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. In the Synaxarian for today's service of Orthros, the morning prayer, we read this description of today's celebration. We quote, We remember the names of those in the Old Testament who were related to Christ by blood. In the Gospel reading, we read of Christ's lineage. In this way, the Church shows us that Christ truly became a man, taking on human nature. He was not a ghost or some kind of an apparition, a myth as some people say, a distant imagined God of the abstract God of philosophers. Such a God does not have a family tree. Our God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He has flesh and blood, human ancestors, many of whom sinned greatly, but like King David, also repented greatly. Yet all of these righteous ones in every age had been well-pleasing to God because they loved him. By taking on human nature, the Son of God became like us in all ways, flesh and blood, mind and soul, heart and will. He differed from us in only one way. He could not sin. Since we know that Christ's human nature remains sinless, he is also divine, and he shows us the way that we can avoid sin and so improve and in transform our human nature, which was made in the likeness of the triune God. In the reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews, we are reminded of the many ancestors of Christ and the prophets who were well-pleasing to God because they loved him. Though he had not seen Christ, they had not seen Christ in the flesh, they obeyed God by faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's how earlier in today's reading of the epistle, uh, that is how faith is defined. The substance, reality, that which can be seen and touched. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, that evidence by ways in the human heart, if you just go deep enough in it. <clears throat> for this faith and hope in God and love for him, these descendants of Adam, Noah, and Abraham endured beyond human endurance trials, tribulations, hardships, knowing deep in their hearts where God had written his law, that they were bearers of the promise given to Abraham. First of all, in the Garden of Eden to Adam, then Abraham, and then Moses, and all the rest. That if they remained faithful, no matter what hardships, even being sawn in two, as the epistle has, they would inherit 
with us who have seen the reality of the incarnation of the second person of the Trinity and have eaten his flesh and have drunk his blood for our salvation. The fulfillment of the promise of the Savior. We celebrate the fulfillment of that promise today and tomorrow. There's a lot of tinsel, ornaments, trees, exchange of presents, feasting, noise, and excitement this time of year. But if we slow down a bit this evening, as nighttime approaches, and we shut out the noise of jingle bells, we might momentarily experience the silence that was broken by a sound that went out over the town of Bethlehem in the Holy Land many centuries ago. The sound was a cry, a gentle cry, from a, coming from a newborn baby boy whose sound proclaimed to the world that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 To him whose entrance into our history we celebrate at this time, Christ our Lord, be all glory, honor, and worship, together with his Father, who is from everlasting, and together with his all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of